What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly how to break into IT with no experience whatsoever. So let's get into it. All right. So let's get something straight out the gate. You do not need prior experience to get started in IT. Absolutely none. And you do not need to be a tech genius who's been building computers since you were six years old. However, you do need curiosity, consistency, and a smart plan. So whether you're coming from retail, fast food, warehouse work, or a completely unrelated field, there is a place for you in tech. In fact, some of the most successful IT professionals start exactly where you are right now at square one. So with that being said, let's walk through on how to break into IT with no experience. All right, so first we have to understand exactly what IT actually is, because a lot of people say that they want to work in IT, but here's the truth. IT is a massive field. So do you want to fix computers, manage networks, work in cybersecurity, write scripts, help users with tech problems, or set up cloud systems? Regardless of what it is that you want to do, IT, this is the backbone of almost every modern business, and it includes roles like help desk support, network administrators, systems analysts, cybersecurity analysts, cloud engineer, IT project manager, database administrator, IT auditor, penetration tester, web administrator, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But do not let any of that overwhelm you. Just know that your first job likely will not be your last, and your path can evolve as you learn more. But before you take another step, you first need to identify which direction feels most exciting. And if you're not sure yet, that's OK. So we're going to start with the easiest entry point into IT. So if you have no experience, your first goal should be getting your foot into the door. And the most accessible jobs in IT include the following. You have IT help desk and technical support. And this is where you'll be answering calls or tickets from users who need help with their devices or software. And this job teaches you how systems work in real life. And this could be a great foundation. You also have the desktop support technician, and this is a more hands-on type of job where you'll be fixing computers, installing software, and maybe supporting printers, monitors, and other networking cables. And then you have what is called the IT support specialist. Now this might combine both help desk and desktop support, and you'll find yourself troubleshooting, maintaining systems, and working with other IT staff. Now, these jobs, they don't usually require prior experience, but they do require you to show basic knowledge and a willingness to learn. The next thing you're going to want to do is get familiar with basic IT concepts. So you do not need a degree, but you do need some skills. So here's what you should learn first. And some of this stuff is free and some of this stuff could be free 99. But first thing you need to know your core IT skills. So you need to know how computers work when it comes to hardware and software. You need to know operating systems, especially Windows and Linux. You need to know basic networking when it comes to IP addresses, DNS, DHCP, and some other stuff. You need to know some cybersecurity fundamentals like how to reset a password, what is a firewall, and what is phishing. You need to know something about file systems, permissions, and user accounts. And you need to have some common troubleshooting techniques to help you solve some basic problems. And when it comes to training, you can get access to some free or some free 99 learning resources, or you can learn certifications like CompTIA IT Fundamentals or CompTIA Tech Plus or the CompTIA A Plus certification. And if you want to learn about cybersecurity, you can always go visit this website called Try Hack Me, where they'll teach you some fundamentals about cybersecurity. But regardless of what you do, you want to make a goal to study at least one hour per day. And that's it, because all of this stuff will add up over time. Now, after you do all of that, you're going to go out there and get your first IT certification. So here's the truth. Certifications, they are your golden ticket when you do not have experience. They tell employers, hey, I've got the knowledge. Just give me a chance. And here's another thing. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get certified. You can just pick one of these certifications listed on your screen right here. So once again, you have the CompTIA IT Fundamentals or the Tech Plus, and this is for absolute beginners, and it's going to cost you around $130 or so to get certified in that. Then you have the CompTIA A Plus, and this is for people who want help desk and tech support roles. And this is a two-part exam, and each exam costs approximately $265. Then you have what is called the Google IT Support, and this is for general IT support information. And this comes free with a trial, and then I think you pay like $49 a month to keep access to it. And then there's the Microsoft Certified Azure Fundamentals. So if you want to learn something about cloud, you can start here, and that costs about $100. Then you have what's called the CCST, or the Cisco Certified Support 
network technician. And this is an introduction to networking and this costs around $125. But here's a tip. Many of these can be self-studied and some do offer discounts for students or they offer some type of bundle. Regardless, just start with one because passing it, this is a confidence booster and more importantly, a resume booster. All right. So another thing that you can do to help you land a job without experience is build a home lab. So a home lab, this is a way to practice hands on IT skills from your home using free tools or virtual machines. You don't need expensive equipment. All you need is your computer. And here are some of the things that you can do with a home lab. So you can install and break Windows and Linux VMs. You can set up virtual networking using VirtualBox or Hyper-V. You can use an open source software called PFSense to learn about firewall based basics. You can practice commands with PowerShell or Bash. You can set up your own web server and you can play with tools like Nmap, Wireshark or Active Directory. Now, the reason why all of this is important because there's no better way to gain confidence than breaking stuff on purpose and then fixing it. Another thing you can do to help you get your first job is update your resume and your LinkedIn profile. So your old resume might say something like retail associate or warehouse tech, and that's all right. You just need to translate your experience into tech friendly language. So here's some examples. So if your old skill is you help customers with returns, you would translate that into the IT version where it says you provided support and troubleshooting, or if you manage inventory, you would say, I maintain asset tracking systems. If you train new employees, you will put in delivered end user guidance and support. If you solve problems quickly, you would say, I diagnose and resolve technical issues. If you said that you changed a whole bunch of light bulbs, you would say, I successfully installed a bunch of illumination systems. You get the point of what I'm doing here? We're just rewording tasks that you did at your job to make them sound more technical. And then you also want to include sections like this. So you want to have a professional summary. You can have something that says something like, I'm an aspiring IT support specialist with hands-on training and a passion for technology. And I completed the CompTIA a certification in home lab projects. You want to list any certifications that you passed or you're currently in progress to get. You want to list any home lab experiences that you may have done. And you also want to stress your communication, problem solving, and teamwork soft skills abilities. And also do not forget about LinkedIn. So if you don't have one, you do need to create one because employers will look you up on LinkedIn. So you want to update your title. So if under your profile picture, there'll be a space where you can update your title. You might want to put something like aspiring IT support technician, CompTIA A plus certified. And then you want to start connecting with other IT professionals in your area to build up your network. Now, after you do all of that, it's time to get out there and start applying for some jobs. But listen closely. You do not need to meet every single bullet point in a job description. Most jobs are just whitelists. So if you meet just 50 to 60 percent of the requirements, apply for the job anyway. And places you can apply are places like Indeed, LinkedIn, Dice, local government or school job boards, temp agencies with IT contracts like Robert Half or Tech Systems. And then there's a bunch of entry level apprenticeships that you can go out there and find on sites like Apprenti and Year Up. And also you want to apply daily to where it becomes a habit. And when you do land interviews, do not lie. Just be honest about your journey, showing what you've learned and bring the path with you because employers, they will notice this. Also consider starting small if you have to. So your first job may not be glamorous. You might start off as a tier one help desk representative or work contract gigs, or even volunteer at a nonprofit setting up their computers. And all of that is okay because every job is a stepping stone. Each job teaches you something new. So in just six to 12 months, you should have enough real world experience to where you can level up. And speaking of leveling up, so IT change is very fast. So you're going to have to stay competitive and you're going to have to keep on learning. So after you get your first job, you might want to start exploring other certifications like the CompTIA Network Plus, Security Plus, Linux Plus, or cloud certifications like AWS and Azure. And you can even pivot into more specialized roles when you get the opportunity, like cybersecurity analysts, cloud support engineers, system administrator, network technician, IT auditor, DevOps support, and SOC analysts. So essentially, the more that you learn and prove, the more doors for opportunity will eventually open up for you. Now, as you're going through all of this, you're going to want to build a support system because you are not alone out in this journey. You want to surround yourself with people who are on the same journey or they are ahead of you. 
And you can find your IT tribe in various places like tech discord communities, Reddit, LinkedIn networking groups, local IT meetups or user groups and online forums. And once you find these people, ask questions, share your victories and stay inspired. Now, here's some bonus tips for what you should not do. All right. So while you're out there on your journey, these are the things you want to avoid. You do not want to get stuck in tutorial hell. Learning is great, but execution is better. Do not just go out there and start binge watching videos. Actually go out there and apply the stuff that you are learning in the videos. Do not wait to be perfect. Don't wait until you feel ready to apply. Apply anyway, because confidence grows after you take action. Do not ignore the soft skills. You need to talk to people in IT. Communication, patience, and teamwork, all of that goes a long way, especially if you're working a help desk shop. And do not give up after one rejection. You might get rejected 50 times in a row. Who cares? The 51st time, that might be your golden ticket into the IT industry. All right, so let's wrap all this up. Breaking into IT with no experience is 100% possible. People do it every single day from former truck drivers and baristas to teachers and stay-at-home parents. The key is starting right where you are, staying consistent and building your confidence through learning, practicing, and applying. So do not wait until you feel ready. Go get your first certification, start building that home lab, and start writing that resume. And most importantly, start applying all of this knowledge because the tech industry is waiting for you and the potential to earn a lot of money is also waiting for you. So. Let me know what you think, and I will holler at you all on the next video. Peace.